There you are, Mike. He's probably the last person. <laughs> Well, I give the glory to God to get to save this country. He's had his hand in all of this. Um, I say, Donna, I say, when you say, what if, I look back and I say, what if I didn't get over my biggest fear, which was public speaking? <laughs> and seriously, um, my story, you know, when, I, when my parents divorced back when I was seven years old in 1968, divorces weren't common and I got put into a new school and I was the only kid from a broken home. So right away, the devil put in his lies that I wasn't good enough. I didn't fit in. I had this fear of rejection. Well, it went two ways. It would go, I would either show off or I would not talk to people. That would be, you know, and uh, then that's when I got into cocaine, gave me false courage, just heightened pain, a lot of, that's what addictions do. But the, um, I'm gonna kind of go two parallel tracks here. Well, then, uh, I, I ended up getting into the bar business, not a good place for an addict, but, <laughs> but, they, uh, but my friends, it was, it was pretty amazing. I had good, I had good um, seeds, um, you know, growing up, you know, to Bible school, church and everything, but I had never, uh, I only reached out to God when things were bad. Uh, when things were going bad, God, get me through this, I'll never do it again. And I call those reactionary prayers. Well, then, uh, my friends, when, we'd, when the bars would close, we'd always go to, we'd go to someone's house, we'd be doing cocaine or drinking or whatever, and, and I would get into this speech about the Bible that I read about in jail and Revelation and read about, tell them about end times, and they'd find the Lord, and, and, uh, and, I'd be, and the next day, and they'd be gone, the brother friends, well, you kid talking about this, we're losing friends, you know, they'd find Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was always me trying to convince myself, and, um, and uh, you get up to, I'll fast forward through, because uh, I really want to get into the fear and then this, uh, this rejection in our callings. Well, I, it, when, when I invented my pillow then, and then in 19, or in, let's see, in January 16, 2009, um, I had quit, I quit everything by the grace of God overnight, and I knew that God had given me this big platform, but I thought it was to get other people out of addiction. And... Uh, mm -hmm. I go to do that first infomercial in 2011, and we, I had this dream, and you know, God had given me this idea for this pillow and everything. And, but we went to film it. We went to do our reads the night before, and the one guy from Hollywood, he texts the other guy, he said, this is the worst guy I've ever seen. He will never make it on TV. <laughs> and I, and, but I walked out the next day, and I was petrified, this live audience, and I couldn't talk. It was like an hour and a half to do one line. And, and it was just his fear of talking in front of people. And, and we, we took away the teleprompter, we brought in a table, and I did it just the way I'd done shows for years. And it launched October 7, 2011. I was living in my sister's basement, and, and you've seen it before. We, it became the number one information in the world in like two months. And, but um, with that fear of rejection, though, I'm going to... I'll fast forward through all the things of my pillow that, you know, we went, we got so big. And then the summer of 2014, um, we were within two days of going under $6 million in debt. And I didn't have a bank. I didn't nothing. This was all built from scratch. And that's when I met Kendra. And she had something I didn't have that she had a, per and I knew it, she had a personal relationship with Jesus. And she says, we know we need to pray for favor and we need to pray for all this. And, and um, I pulled everything in house into my pillow and we did it our way, kind of. The, I learned from all the past, from all these mistakes that had been made. And uh, like the summer of, or the spring of 2012, we lost millions because people took advantage of us and, and made mistakes. But I seen the mistakes they were making. So I think uh, when you, you look back and you say, well, these things had to happen in order to get you where you were here. And uh, anyway, the, um, with the, uh, with that fear of rejection, I still, I couldn't, you know, I would still, even though, because you're, now you're on TV, it's just doing commercials, you don't see the crowd. Well, I want to tell this funny story. So I end up over in India in the summer of 2016. This is before I met our great president. By the way, our great president says hello, our real president. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, talk, I talked to him earlier this week. But um, anyway, I get over to India 
and uh, we were over there with my foundation, and I, and I ended up, they threw this big birthday for me. It turns out I paid for my own birthday. It's a long story. Um, <laughs> But, but, but I had to do, I was with, uh, if you all know Larry Ross, and I was with Larry Ross and Kendra, and we get there, and there was like this many people in this room, and they wanted me, they did an introduction video, and they had put a, a video of, I knew Prince the singer before he died, and I knew the Eagles band, and, and anyway, Larry comes up, and he said, they want you to do a speech. I said, I can't talk in front of people. And he said, he goes, Mike, you're never going to see him again. I go, yeah, okay. And he goes, first they wanted me to sing. I'm going, that ain't happening to you. <laughs> <laughs> I go, you know, it's a, uh, anyway. So I go, yeah, I'm never going to see him again. And so I go and I get up to do this speech. And I start out, and it gets, I'm, I'm an hour into it, right? And I'm up there just telling these, I go down all these like, rabbit holes and I get sidetracked and, and I don't even know what I'm up there telling them about. Well, anyway, I get done and, and um, this guy comes up to me, he's like the chief minister of the India there. And he says, you're the only guy I know that can use, that can have, have Prince, the pr Prince singer, Eagles man, Donald Trump, crack cocaine, and Jesus, all in same speech. <laughs> and, and, uh, but it gave, me a, it gave me some confidence, and then the next time I had to speak in public was when, uh, um, when uh, the president reached out to me to speak in Minnesota before the 2016 election. Scared to death there, and I was out on the tarmac. I just talked to Michelle Bachman the other day, and I said, Michelle, do you remember what happened then? And, and uh, I had this vision, I'd be speaking, I get these downloads from God and, and Minnesota and, they, and everyone's going, well, that didn't happen. It was three days before, two days before, the three days before the election. And we were actually in, in uh, Las Vegas and we get a call or an email saying, Mike, will you speak? Donald Trump wants you to speak at the rally in Minnesota. So I take a red eye there. That was a miracle even that that happened, that there was even a seat available. We get back to Minnesota. And there's a picture of me, I'm out on the tarmac, there's 20,000 people, it's noon on that Sunday. And I am just petrified, praying and uh, to God, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna say, I'm scared to death. And Michelle Boxman walks up, she goes, Mike, my, I'm Michelle Boxman. She goes, you look like you need to pray. I go, yes, I do. <laughs> and, uh, but I get out there and I, uh, I, I'm all Tim, and I said, I was, I was raised in, in, born and raised here in Minnesota, and they're all going, whoa, and I'm going, this ain't so bad, I just started to say stuff, and they're going, whoa, it didn't matter what I said. And, uh, but, but, they, uh, but what happened then is, you know, I could, what, what happened for me then was things started happening. You know, you always see me wearing my cross on TV. And one of the things, you know, I wasn't saved then. Now, I'm going to tell you when I get saved, it'll, it, it'll be, you know, a surprise to y'all. But I would wear my cross on TV, and I remember doing an infomercial up in Canada, not an infomercial, on the shopping channel, by the way, another one that canceled me out. Um, but they, uh, I'm up there, and I'm all alone, and I'm in this green room, there's cobwebs on the wall, and there's no coffee in the coffee makers, and I, you're up there 24 hours straight doing all of these I know three hours talking about a pillow on TV, but I, we we needed the money, and it was all you know we had. We were relying on that, and um, and she this lady walks in finally after ten hours of being there. She walks in the green and she goes, "Congratulations, you have broke every record here in Canada, but I need you to take your cross and tuck it inside your shirt or take it off completely when you're on air." And I looked at her and I said, well, "Now why is that?" And she goes, it is prejudice against other religions. And she goes in this spiel, and I flipped out, okay? I completely flip out, and I said, I don't care, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, it was like that one movie. I'm, I, you're right, I'm out of here, because I wanted to leave. And she gets, I, I mean, I went on this three-minute rant. I had a little anger issues back then. And, uh, and she goes, she says, well, if you feel that strongly about it, I guess you can keep it out, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but, but I... But I always wanted to be that person and to have that relationship, but I couldn't ever quite get there. Well, people would call me on TV, and this is like almost God's training ground for me where I'm at today. 
they would call up, this is back when I was the only call, by myself and maybe five other people taking phone calls for pills, and be the, especially in the middle of the night, I'd get calls by people going, you're wearing your cross on TV, how dare you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm, I'd sit and tell them about Jesus, and they'd end up getting saved and going, there, take that. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm not saved yet, right? <laughs> you know? And uh, so as I'm telling them, trying to, I'm telling all this evidence from the Bible and all this stuff, I'm telling them. And, and uh, anyway, the... The, uh, so this gets up to, I'm trying to tell you where I end up getting saved. When you look at, I always look at, in my book, you'll read it. It says, what are the odds from crack addict to CEO? I use mathematics to prove that God exists. And I look at it like the, the what ifs, you know, the what ifs. You know, if you look back and say, but this is almost impossible, this divine appointment, or this could never happen. Or, you know, one in a million or one in a billion. When do you multiply, when do you add them together? And when do you consider it a miracle? And... This happened to me, this is like, I was invited to the White House after Donald Trump was elected, and I walked in there, and I ever thought with my past I could get within 100 feet of the White House, believe me. <laughs> and here I am, I walk in, and they're showing me stuff, and there's this table, about 12 of us, and I'm sitting here with my name tag, and right here there's no tag, and I said, who's sitting here? He said, the president is. Now this thing went live on national TV. You just seen the picture of us too at that White House there. And all my friends, my old crack friends are at home going, what is this crackhead sitting next to the president? Jesus is real because this is impossible. <laughs> and, and that's how I felt too, okay. Well, well and I went into, a, um, it was a, called Operation Restore Warrior. It's a, it was, a, and I'm not a veteran. And, uh, but I was blessed to be able to, it was a divine appointment. I went in there on February 18th, 2017. And I went there with hope of getting what Kendra had, that personal relationship with Jesus. And on February 18th, 2017, I got on my knees and did that full surrender. And I'll tell you, it was what I thought would be hard. It was, it was like a relief. I could forgive myself for things I had done way back when that I was the only one that was just with me. The Lord forgave me, it was just amazing. But I walked out of there and one of the things that was gone was that not just the fear of public speaking, but it was the fear of speaking out for things you believe in like Jesus. And that, it was, and that was for me, two months later, here I am at U.S. Bank Stadium at a, uh, it, was a, it, it was a Pulse event with Nick Hall, I believe, and, they, and in fact, I just texted or talked to him today. But, they, but I'm out there and, and uh, there's 50,000 millennials, and here I'm telling a little bit of my story, and two weeks later, now there were Christian bands, there were evangelists there and everything, and two weeks later, I'm at an amusement park in Minnesota, and my daughter, or my granddaughter, with my granddaughter, and all these millennials, these kids are coming up. And they're going, I got saved. I got found the Lord because of your, what your story was, you know, your testimony. And I'm going, and for me, it made me feel so, that I was on the right path. When June talks about Proverbs 3, 5, 6, you know, acknowledge him and he will guide your path. That's the second part of that. And, and so I knew that I was on the right path. And, and for, for me... You know, the way, we, the way things are now, you all know the thing. When I said at the Rose Garden there, when, uh, by the way, that was off the cuff. The president didn't know I was going to say that. When I said God, had, a nation had turned its back on God, that seems like a million years ago, okay? You go back a year and a half to, those, to that day because I really thought, you know, things were going to change so fast and I wanted them to change. Well, then, then all of a sudden, look what's happened, okay, in a year and a half. And I want you to go, now I want to get to the fear part of this. You know, you talk about roaring lambs and this, where, where we're at now as a country, you go back to December of 2019. And there is, people don't look for hope or reach out for Jesus and stuff when things are going great. That was a beautiful time. That was Merry Christmas. The best consumer confidence ever. Everybody's employed. Everybody's lives have gotten better. Things are roaring, roaring along and... And um, at that point, I had talked to a friend of mine I just met, actually, and we talked about, you know, we talked about that people don't look for hope unless some things are bad. And he goes, Mike, it would take the Great Depression to bring this nation back to God. And I said, at that time, I said, no. I said, we have something better than that. We have addiction. 
I said in diction, he said, the Great Depression, people had God, they were praying for, they were praying for shelter, food and shelter. Well, here with the diction, they're praying for your souls. And, and, he, and he said, you know, he agreed. And I'm going, it's addiction's an opportunity of a lifetime. Well, that was then. Now we have where we're at now is the opportunity of a lifetime. We have everything that's going, that's going the way it's going in our country and, and even around the world. And with the, with the addiction platform, um, I have now, I've set up the Lindell Recovery Network. So that's free. I want to get this in before I get done talking here. But I set up the LindellRecoveryNetwork.org. And it's got, it's the best online help and it's free. We have June's up, the secure keys up there. We have the online platform where I went and I got saved. Remember, addiction, to get freed of addiction, that's just a bonus. The real thing is to get to relationship with Jesus. You know, that's where your hope lies. But I want to tell you this when I end here, in fear, this is the time. We're going to look back and you're going to say, what if we all decided not to live in fear? Because that's where it's at. Now, you can only fear one thing, fear of the Lord. If you can't speak out now for Jesus and ministry to people, you're never going to be able to because they're looking for hope. Their arms are open. And you all, if you all have the Lord here, you need to speak it out now and not leave in, live in fear of speaking it out because we're going to get way out here. And when we get to this glorious place, we're going to look back and you're going to say every thing that happened in this country and the things that are happening had to happen just the way God intended because all these people that don't have the Lord, they're looking for hope now. I don't care what political side they're on. And this will be the greatest revival for Jesus in history. Thank you. Thank you.